Hey, could you clarify what you meant about having the U.S. military guard the U.S. border along with Mexico? Thank you, sir. Yeah. Uh, the, first of all, the border. Uh, the Mexican border is very unprotected by our laws. We have horrible, horrible and very unsafe laws in the United States, and we're going to be able to uh, do something about that hopefully soon. Hopefully, Congress will get their act together and get in and create some very powerful laws like Mexico has and like Canada has and like almost all countries have. We don't have laws. We have catch and release. You catch and then you immediately release and people come back years later for a court case, except they virtually never come back. So what we are preparing for the military to secure our border between Mexico and the United States. You're watching CBC News Network. As of Wednesday of this week, a little more than 6,000 people have crossed the Quebec border seeking asylum so far in 2018. And that's three times as many at the same point last year. It's almost certain it's just a taste of what's to come. With the onset of warmer weather, officials are expected to get a flood of asylum seekers, with some estimates going as high as 400 people a day. The situation has led to criticism of the Liberal government. Here's Conservative MP Michelle Rumpel and in question period on Thursday and the response from Immigration Minister Ahmed Hussein. Prime Minister has failed to manage the border. Will the Prime Minister tell Canadians if he has any plan to stop the flow of illegal border crossers? We have the, an, uh, a task force, an intergovernmental task force on irregular migration. We had our ninth meeting last night with uh, different pro provincial representatives. We have made the necessary investments in speeding up work permits for asylum seekers so they don't minim uh, we minimize the impacts on provincial social services. The Conservatives aren't just offering criticism, they also have a plan. Under the current rules, people cannot claim asylum at official ports of entry. Now, this means people cross at unofficial points, at which point they are inside Canada and then can claim refugee status. Rempel's idea makes the entire border with the U.S. an official point of entry. Well, let's run that plan by our Sunday scrum. Vicky Mochama in Toronto, John Ibbotson in Ottawa, and Rob Breckenridge in Calgary. So, Rob, we'll start with you. A long border there where you are, much of it unprotected. Yeah. Uh, what is the merit, do you think, behind the idea? I, it's, it seems really impractical. I mean, it, this whole thing is a mess. I think anyone pretending this, that there's an easy solution here, I think, is just kidding themselves. I mean, um, the, the, certainly the Prime Minister can be faulted for his ill-considered tweet last year in January where he seemed to be encouraging asylum seekers to come to Canada. I think that did exacerbate the problem, but I think it would be a problem nonetheless, and th there is no easy answer. I mean, the whole point of the Safe Third Country Agreement is that we can turn people away at a border crossing because they haven't yet set foot in Canada. So either we spend the billions of dollars to, to just line the border with RCMP and customs officials, or we spend the billions of dollars to process these claims and, and, and take care of these people while they're here in the interim. I mean, there, there's no easy answer here. And, um, you know, I mean, historically, these numbers are not necessarily out of whack from the numbers of asylum seekers we've seen in past years. Certainly that safe third country agreement brought that down. But um, I, I don't think there's a way to address this in the short term. And you'd presume that uh, the Conservatives would have to be in power because the Liberals probably won't go for this. But Vicky, what do you think of the plan? Uh, it's an unworkable plan. It just simply won't work. And I think it's an attempt at, at, at a solution, but it really, like, it won't work. There's just no way to, like Rob says, line every single inch of that border. And I think Ralph Goodale has said that that, that plan would actually incentivize people to do more harm to themselves and thus create more issues for us. Because then you would see people getting on boats and going around by water. And I mean, this is, a, this is, that would be a scenario where you're faulting people for a situation we created. And that's essentially what we have with the Safe Third Country Agreement. We've told people that they can't claim asylum at an official port of entry, and so they walk across the border at an unofficial one. And so we've created that scenario. If we simply rescinded that portion of the Safe Third Country Agreement or pulled out altogether, as many, many refugee advocates and refugees themselves have asked for, that would actually create a much more tenable solution in which people can walk up to the border, be, ha get you know access services directly, and we're not having to plan in an ad hoc fashion. Well, Vicky mentioned Ralph Goodale. His office told the Canadian press it would be uh, just cause for people to make more remote, dangerous uh, routes to Canada. Uh, John, uh, what do you think of the plan? What do you think of the concerns? Uh, well, the concerns are utterly justified. This is a huge problem. Uh, look, we have a, a robust immigration and refugee program in this country, prob in, uh, probably the most robust in all of the developed world. 300,000 people arriving here every year. 
who have been properly vetted, who have the job skills, the language ability, um, and <clears throat> the education needed to contribute to Canadian society. Confidence in that system is put at risk when people are crossing the border illegally, claiming asylum and staying in this country. It has to be stopped because it could undermine confidence in the entire immigration program, which is vital to Canada's economic future. So we need, I suspect, uh, even tougher legislation. Le legislation that says no matter where you cross the border between Canada and the United States, you are crossing from a safe third country. There can be no, it is ludicrous to believe there can be any such thing as a refugee claimant from the United States. You will be quickly um, uh, put before a tribunal, you will have your claim denied, and you'll be forcibly returned across the border with television cameras watching it happen. It sounds cruel, it sounds brutal, but we cannot allow our, our entire immigration refugee system to be compromised by people fleeing Donald Trump. John, I, I, as I'm sure you're aware, international organizations have criticized the safe third country agreement for actually being a violation of, of the existing refugee rules, the UN Convention on Refugee Rules that both Canada and the United States have agreed to. You cannot a priori declare the United States to be safe for everybody because that's simply not true. And what we're seeing in the demographic changes, whether it's Haitians or Nigerians or Ghanaians, there are people who are telling you, are telling us with their bodies as they walk across, that the United States is actually not a safe third country for them. You can actually look up what they're saying, and they're saying that, you know, that is a racist country, that racist administration is making it more difficult for them to exist. That is actually entirely in line with what international organizations have been saying prior to this particular situation, which is that you cannot do that. It's in contravention of the UN Convention of, Ref of Refugees, and that is the argument for why we should step back from it. If there's any lack of confidence in the system, it's because we fail to communicate how the asylum system works. The asylum system cannot be perceived as a, a way for uh, Americans who are probably illegally in the United States not, and therefore not American citizens in the first place to come to Canada. Uh, you, again, one third of Canadians do not support our immigration system and one third are agnostic. If we move to a point where a majority of Canadians say that's it, enough, seal the border, we're not bringing anybody in legally or illegally, we'll be doing far more damage. We cannot allow ourselves to become victim to a, a domestic problem in the United States between the Trump administration and people who are uh, illegally in the country in the first we place. We can't also run a refugee system by polling on human rights. We either have to agree that we believe in human rights or we don't. Rob, last word to you. We've got about 40 seconds left. <laughs> well, look, I mean, Canadians may not be fond of Donald Trump, but I don't think Canadians would buy the notion that things have changed so dramatically uh, in the last couple of years that, that people are legitimately fleeing the United States. So I, I think that, that Canadians are still going to view the U.S. as a safe third country. The agreement should still hold force. But we've still got international commitments where if you set foot on Canadian soil, it doesn't matter how you got here that you get to make an asylum claim. So the answer is to keep people from crossing in the first place. And that's going to mean a whole lot of resources devoted to, to these areas, these remote areas. Big questions. Great answers, guys. Thank you so much. That On that note, we will end our Sunday Scrum for another week. Thanks to our guests, Star Metro National columnist Vicky Mochama in Toronto. Thanks, Vicky. Thanks. Globe and Mail's John Ibbotson in Ottawa. John, thank you. Thank you, John. And the 770 talk show host Rob Breckenridge in Calgary.